Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range and I've just about recovered now from Finnish Brutality 2023 which was an absolutely fantastic match. Um, you will see when we go through the footage in a moment how awesome it really was. I mean uh, practically every Brutality match really sets the bar higher than all the previous ones and this one was definitely a very high bar it has set for the future. All made possible of course by Varos Deleka, who organise it, all the sponsors and my and Chappie's presence there was made possible by you, the viewer, who support us on Patreon or Player, formerly Utreon. Uh, many, many thanks to absolutely everyone involved in any way, shape or form. I can't stress that enough. Unfortunately, Chappie and myself ended up shooting on different squads in the main match. Um, he was shooting high speed, low drag, and he's got his own video with, uh, with his stages there. I was shooting in uh, the breacher category of, uh, of TST slash armored division. Um, I went LARPing. Um, my first ever Finnish Brutality, I shot a borrowed L1A1 in uh, sort of late 1950s gear, at the sort of start of the uh, SLR's service with the British Army. Here I've gone for the other end of its sort of frontline service. I went for a sort of late 70s, early 80s get up. I've got a Mark I high power as pistol. Bog standard L1A1 with the exception of the optic. Uh, this is a primary arms SLX three power micro prism uh, direct mounted to an ACOG mount on a rail by uh, DS arms. Um, I felt so guilty about the modern optic that I went a bit overboard on everything else. Um, the reason why I went for the optic and not irons was uh, several fold because uh, uh, Giga of Polnar Tactical, Ian of Forgotten Weapons and myself all decided we were gonna shoot different battle rifles. Um, Giga should wear glasses. Um, he needs an optic to see what he's shooting at. The, uh, the, the plates are backstop colored on the backstop and are very, very difficult to see. Um, so both Giga and Ian had optics, um, so I needed an optic, and uh, in a previous video you may have noticed that the original optic A was utter tonk, and B broke in two and smacked me in the head. I've got a nice uh, Harry Potter scar now. Um, so as part of going overboard, ah, the, uh, the compulsory items I, uh, I took for TST division, now you've got to carry 12 kilos, uh, 90 rounds of rifle ammo, 30 rounds of pistol ammo, uh, you need a light source, so I have an OG, actually works, OG British Army Torch of the Era, you need a tourniquet or uh, a bandage, and I have a 1973 dated first field dressing, and I added a couple of extra items, such as an original cleaning kit tin, which I wore uh, in, the, in the pouch on my 1968 pattern. Anyway, I think we'll possibly talk a bit more about that as we go along. Um, won't bore you too much before we start, so let's dive in to stage one, which was an extremely creative variation on a Casada drill. Last year? Oh. Luxurious. So we start in a Finnish so, um, armor ready, personnel character, which is luxurious yeah. compared to uh, the BMPs we've used Super previously. Ready. You'll see I've got a 30 round magazine fitted, um, L4 LMG mag. We carry the 24 kilo kettlebell to the first telegraph pole. We make ready, and then we make one hit through. We had to shoot pro. We one hit through the obstacle course, and there was a nice little lane that if you stuck to it, you'd have no trouble. It was pretty clear on the left, but if you went outside, you had to take your rifle, pick up the kettlebell, bring it back to where it was, and throw it again. So it paid to throw accurately as you went along here. Now I hadn't actually been able to train very much because life's been a bit hectic and uh, I'm, I'm feeling this. Now the rifle has a long Bren sling on it, um, which is a real help when you're going to sling the rifle, which you don't have to on this stage. But as you'll see in other stages, it becomes a bit of a problem and I should have shortened it. I shouldn't have just left it at its uh, longest setting. Ooh, that throw was a bit crap. So 12 kilos in webbing is a 
different proposition to 12 kilos in a plate carrier and on a pistol belt. Last one didn't quite clear the last log, so I've got to uh, shoot once more. Then just plop it over. Now because I've got OG gear, I've got the OG dump pouch, which is chucking it down the front of your smock. This is a full retention match. Um, these high value shots are made, otherwise I'd have got a big penalty. Um, it's a full retention match, you get penalised for leaving anything behind, um, which is mostly to help uh, uh, reset. The range crew has to run forward 100 yards every time, it's a bit of a pest. So we have to carry the kettlebell back so the stage is self-resetting. You see the bayonet, which is my knife, according to TST rules. I've got the webbing set up in a kind of alley jungle rig fashion without the kidney pouches because they're too wide. They don't leave me enough space. And it's 12 kilos in there without the bum roll and without the, um, uh, the helmet, which is good. Less to take on the aircraft. And if I hadn't had the mag fall out of the front of my smog, I'd have made that. But there was no penalty for that. But uh, that was an awful lot of type two fun. Good run, mate. Thank you. Good run. Ah, uh, uh, shame about the timeout. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so close. Uh, whew. I was just gonna go die now. Good luck. Thanks. So in Breacher, after each stage, uh, we went and did a physical challenge. And uh, the physical challenge after stage one was digging a foxhole. So we were given various uh, entrenching tools of various kinds, and uh, we'd dig the foxhole and we'd um, have it measured at the end. And there was some witchcraft done with the scoring uh, to determine the position in, uh, in Breacher overall at the end. Um, as I said, I'm not fit, but I actually managed to dig a reasonable hole in 10 minutes. So, on to stage two now, and it's become a bit of a classic to shoot from a moving Sisu truck. So, um, we got to do that again, and this was an awfully, awfully good fun. You may have noticed the facial hair, which is also me overcompensating for the, uh, for the compromise on the LARP with the scope. So there's four targets out there. You can get one bonus hit on each. This isn't timed, uh, but it gets progressively harder as you go along. I hit three, and then get to the end. It's bouncing around. I thought just give it loads. Now using the front of your smock as a dump pouch is nowhere near as efficient as a dump pouch. It's kind of painfully slow to watch. And there we start to see the problems of using these original pouches. And I had the top of the LMG mag sticking out the top. Need to check whether there's one in the chamber or not, which there wasn't. Contrary to British Army FUD law, LMG mags run absolutely fine. They're not intended to be gravity assisted or any of the other fuddish things you hear the old and bold okay, say. Stand by. So here we're in the middle of a minefield marked by clay pigeons. And we've got to make four hits, one on each target, using each of the obstacles for support. If you step on a mine, you, uh, your stage finishes and you get all the penalties. Now this year the penalty regime has been much more sophisticated, or, or bonus malus, sort of penalty bonus regime. Uh, it's not just sort of 60 seconds. Um, the idea is that you don't end up with one, one stage dominating the match because loads of people end up with loads of penalties. Uh, and it, it was it was well refined, worked well. So, dump the rifle onto the NZO Car 21. It's a bonus shot, and I didn't make it. I was a bit miffed about that. <laughs> then we go back, and I'm watching the ground because I do not want to step on a clay pigeon. Hit. 
here I make a bit of an error. Muzzle's a bit low. I smelt rubber. I thought, oh, yep, too low. I need to be trained. I need to train more. It's painful watching me stand up. And that's the end of that one. The barrel of the magazine. magazine. Right, thank you. Thank Time! You. Eight, nine, two, eight. Yes. Bit miffed about the sniper shot. That was right on and it didn't go. It's very close all, all the time. Ah. Uh, oh well. Nice one. Thank you. I start rushing sometimes and that's what I miss. But when the sights are on and I don't screw it up, they go and I don't have to wait for the ding. Oh, other than the sniper shot, I'm happy with that. <sighs> so the next breacher challenge was push-ups and I have a skiing shoulder injury, so I didn't exactly manage many. Um, there is no point in hurting yourself on these. So I, I did what I could. I can't train it um, because shoulder's a bit screwed and it radiates out, it's a bit of a pain. So, um, ended up with only five of them, which uh, were not very fun and was a bit pathetic, but uh, it is what it is. You've got to remember that Yari's got 70 kilos in that thing. So, stage three, we have a 45 kilo backpack strapped onto us, on top of the 12 kilos of gear and five kilos of rifle and probably another three or four kilos of clothing I'm wearing and boots. Um, and we have to do what would, under normal circumstances, be a fairly simple stage. But also, because of the evil geniuses uh, of Varustaleka, particularly uh, Jenny, we have to sing a song as we go across. Okay. Ready for the off. Send by. Beep. Okay, so there's three openings we have to shoot through. What are you, and I have to sing a particular song. In a Bobby world. Thanks, Jenny. It's fantastic. You can brush my hair, but I don't have any. I'm getting up. Oh, so this was standing up. Fucking hell. I hate you all. So now I'm like, how on earth do I get up? Come on, Bobby. Over the pallets. Come on, Bobby, let's go party. The singing does not help. But I'm mostly going one for one, but by now I'm desperately trying not to put a knee on the ground. The phone's just getting started. Missed. Oh, I missed. What are you? I'm a puppy So you're already gassed from uh, from all the exertion, but then having to sing as long sing as well, jeez. This was just for us, this wasn't from the the normal people. This was just a uh, media squad. And now I've just got the butt on my, on my arm because I'm desperately trying not to put a knee on the ground. I'm a puppy. What are you? In a puppy world. But Ken is hotter. I don't know what I'm singing. The dodgy uh, 70s facial hair uh, overcompensating for the LARP is uh, definitely looking good here. I'm fucking struggling. Oh, it's awful. Come on. Just Desperately trying to. Cheek World is uh, overrated. So now I know because this one's the last one. I do actually put my knee down. But... Thank you, Ken. Can I hand that off to someone, please? Oh. Can I get up? Uh. Oh. Thanks, Obama. Yeah, need some help up there. Uh, I'm a Barbie girl. 
but that was uh that was fun. Oh, I should have mentioned earlier that um, most of the footage here is filmed by Pearl on Our Tacticals Jan, which is uh, excellent. Uh, some of the other third person stuff is filmed by Jordan of Forgotten Weapons, and uh, the rest is my head cam. So after stage three, we went and did some finished para burpees, which are, they don't look too bad, but they are, particularly up for a while, and if you. Uh, across the small of my back, I have a uh, full water bottle. So uh, every time I leant back, I was sort of getting a bit of uh, chiropractic. <laughs> uh, managed to do a reasonable number of them. And then on to stage four, which was brilliant. And I'm on a 20 round mag this time. Started with both guns, magazine place, but not made ready. So here we start with a little run to get the blood up. And there's some plates, one, two, one, two. Now one ones handle better than they look like they should given their length and weight, but they're very, very well balanced and very ergonomic. So then we have a casualty we've got to deal with. Oh, fucking hell, oh, mate! Why are you being up to? Oh, you look like you've been in the oh, fucking wars! Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, right! Oh, let's get this So we have to tourniquet this, gentlemen. Oh, 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 we'll get you right fixed up in a minute, mate. Right. Now we're actually tourniqueting his real leg, not the prosthesis. And we had to do it properly. <laughs> The acting was fantastic. And before you leave, the belt will stay all the way. Before you leave. Okay, good. Continue. Good. Grey belt crow first. Here, lock the wind last. Yep. Good, go. Back to the rifle. Bit of one, two, one, two action. This rifle and optic combination are fantastic, I must say. So another high value shot, and this is where you really need to know your holdovers, and it's the advantage of having your own gun. Because that was a very small plate, and I made it, and my OG dump pouch did not work. Cost me time. Sling the rifle, grab the pistol, and this is a proper 58 pattern holster. It's awful, but it protects the pistol very well. And this is where the sucking starts, because we have a dueling tree, and I was sucking. It was actually quite a long way away for plates that size. And then 50 round mags, I ended up with it in my mouth, which was just awful, but quicker than uh, quicker than trying to chuck it in a pocket or down my front. And then I'm really concentrating hard on not mashing the trigger, but then it goes a bit better. And we're done, we do not time out. Clear, clear hammer down, holster. So that was a really cool creative stage. Um, that was absolutely fantastic. That was well thought, well thought out. Um, and just, just being able to do some, some basic first day, some basic stop the bleed on an actor was fantastic. Next thing we go for is um, a bit of window entry. We have to jump back and forth over a, uh, over a, over a sort of wall thing that they'd set up for us. Um, I ended up rolling over it, the sort of British Army going over a gate or a fence style thing, because I am not flexible and I am not fit, unlike Yadi. <laughs> so the last stage of uh, day one, stage five, was pistol only uh, with random targets that uh, light up for 13 seconds and flash in random order and you have to shoot them where they light up and if you shoot them from the middle you have to be balancing on uh, the beam 
without touching the ground. So you have to start balanced. And then left position is through there. The white pepper poppers in front are penalties. And I got a penalty for that. My toe was touching the ground. You had to make 24 hits and you had a maximum of 26 shots to do it. Try to aim and then just lift my toe off the ground. That seemed to work. Keep my heel on it. Like, am I going to have to run back? Or and my pistol shooting is a bit sucky. These are not particularly challenging targets. Missed one. Missed again. Back across. And because 15 round mags, I have to reload. By this point, I know I've got penalties because I can't make 24 hits in the amount of ammo remaining. This is very interesting because it forces you to react and, and, and act on visual information. It's not four obvious. Oh, that's four misses now. Oh. So I know I'm in the penalties and it's very demoralizing. Oh, and then my pistol shooting just starts sucking more. Oh, six misses. So ended up with some penalties there. That yeah, a little bit. Though. I have to keep it for 60 seconds for. Toes on the ground. Oh shit! Yeah, that sucked totally. Sorry about that. Never mind. Vito <laughs> Satana! All over. So after stage five, our final exercise was filling three sandbags and moving them uh, to a different location. Uh, again, not really playing to my strengths here, and uh, that. So that kind of sucked, but hey, we. Uh, it's character building. Good job, good job, man. All the way through inside the world. Oh, you put on the mine. Oh, dear, how sad. Never mind. Blissful death will descend upon me. Good job. Come on, guys. Go. Good job. Please sit on your center backs. So, that we get so day one of Finnish Brutality 2023 is over. I'm kind of wrecked, but the moustache held up well. Thoughts are that Breacher is hard. Need long drink. The uh, primary arms three power prism, micro prism on the foul is fantastic. Ian of Forgotten Weapons is amazed that he's seen a foul run reliably because apparently in the States they don't, but then they're not buying proper European ones. Um, the boots are definitely pre-modern, not that comfortable despite the sort of plain insoles. I've not got blisters there though, they're doing okay. Uh, everyone loves the facial hair. Uh, did I mention the facial hair? <laughs> well, it's coming off on Monday when I'm done. Um, and yeah, that was an excellent challenge and uh, looking forward to some dinner when I get my appetite back. <laughs> nah, see you later. Bye. So we had some nice evening fun and frolics with uh, sauna and long drink and beer and uh, enormous burgers, that's always good. And then uh, wake up nice and, uh, and fresh on Sunday morning for stage six. 
This is an interesting one where we start with both hands and we don't have third person footage for most of this, unfortunately, not pretty much all of it, due yep. to a minor screw up on our part, but never mind. Decided I wasn't gonna suck today. So three big poppers from the turret. Remove the mag, high value shot. Small popper. Got it. So then we holster, and you can't quite see it, but trying to holster in that 58 pattern holster sucks. It's just taking me, it's just glacial, it's painful. And then I descend in the turret, oh, and then I realize that the holster isn't secured and a dropped gun is a DQ, so we, uh, we definitely make sure we fix this. Uh, I could have taken the Canadian P51 holster, which wouldn't have had this trouble. Do not want to drop the fucking crystal. I didn't. So then we run over to a rope. Um, I can't climb a rope without gear, but you had to make three attempts. My three attempts were no. pathetic. You got a 30 second bonus if you succeeded at that. And then a 30 round mag goes in, we get to back to the bit I'm good at. Down there is a spinner at about 50 meters. And this is where 308 really comes into its own. Hit on the bottom, hit on the top, and it goes over. This is not even NATO ball ammo, this is 123 grain. And then from over here, you have to be on the tire. And uh, Les suggested to me to sit, and I did. And then we go one, two, one, two, except I forget that it's one, two, one, two. And I dropped the mag early. Oh, fuck. So mag back in, bit of fumbling. High value shot after stowing the mag down my front. That went quickly. There we go. Rifle is now deemed a stick, provided that you don't muzzle anyone else. And then we run all the way to the back of the range. So about 140 odd, 145 meters. And there's a Sarko 308 sniper rifle. You've got three rounds and three targets, which are actually difficult to see even through the scope and difficult to assess which ones I've already shot. So that's why that's taking a bit of time. So shoot the two big ones first and then the middle small one. So aside from the loss of time due to the holster and forgetting the the second one too that actually went quite well reholstering okay. sucked and then i forgot it was one two one two okay. so those two things i thought i saw that reload and i was like what is he doing fucking up that's what he was doing okay, Woo! Exactly all right. so after stage six we had sandbag squats um sort of getting your butt down onto a tire and back up and again Really, I'm such a physical guy. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. But I did it. That's all that counts. So, on to stage seven, and you start shooting at plates from the back of the truck. Then you descend. You run across, and I've made an error here. I've got the 20 round mag on, thinking, thinking that the 30 is going to be too long under that tire. Um, which is okay, except it doesn't account for sucking and missing. Now this is one of those stages where you just have to go for the full three minutes. So it's prone through the tire, standing by the rack, and then you have to move these, there are 20, 25 kilo bags. The black one was a little lighter. And then you grab the rifle and you rinse and repeat. And in the meantime, uh, there appeared to be a cat on the range crew that pushed the bags back down so that when you got back there, they were on the floor again. Everybody gets 180 seconds on this and you get 
penalties for not doing the bags properly. Um, and you get bonuses for each hit you make. And I think, I believe that the, uh, the highest number of hits was 26. But it wasn't much of a bonus. So this is one of those uh, stages where you've got to work really, really hard for not much benefit. I have no idea how many rounds I've fired. These bags feel like they get heavier every round. And here I'm just like, nope. moving my alignment every time. Some people were doing it differently, lining up on the on the first, on the leftmost plate and then um, just muscling it. And then, oh dear. And then we get the joy of the old equipment. So I've got some elastic on the, on the pouches, but just, I can't get at it. I literally can't get at it. The elastic's not helping. I think I would do things differently next time if I ran this uh, same equipment. Time. Unload, so clear. Should have put the 30 rounder in. Ah, oh, I guess I should have missed less. Oh, those pouches don't help. No. No, those pouches suck ass. Let's let someone, someone else show us how it's done. Good job, the <laughs> take those and it's sort of from, from stages like that, you realize how sucky it must have been working with the real equipment. Um, I mean, I had the elastics on the pouches to, uh, so that I could still get into them. Uh, but really, the only times I easily got ammo out of the pouch was when it was one of the long 30 round magazines and I prepped it so that the top of it was sticking out the side and then uh, I didn't actually have to open the pouch. I could just grab it and, uh, um, and, and, and take it. So after that, uh, we went and did a Bangalore torpedo push with a branch of a tree as uh, crawling. Um, some of the guys that really know how to crawl did a fantastic job and I was just in their dust. Much, much, much later. Get those damn arches, go! I'm stuck. That was a technical burp. I misjudged. There are also big rocks on this one. That was really close. We were neck and neck the whole way. I wasn't. <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah. So stage eight, we're back at the VTAC barriers and we start with the rifle loaded and made ready and then lying face down with your face in the dirt. I learned from the last one, uh, 20 hits required, not convinced that I'm going to be able to do it one for one. And psychologically, if I try and do it one for one, I'm actually going to screw up more than if I if I know I've got 10 rounds extra. So nose on that rock. Grab the rifle and the sling. This is this is where the sling being too long starts to get at me. So I'm having to count the rifle, which is fine at these distances. And then I have to crawl under the barbed wire, which is set at just, just a sufficient height that you sort of can't sort of baby crawl. You need to be a little bit lower and you can see the military guys who've done a lot of crawling practice who just roast, race through that. Giga of Polar Tactical was just so fast through that. Uh, 
Oh, this is just glacial. And I'm just trying to find the best way to keep the rifle out of the dust. And at Loppy, you either have moon dust or mud. And we had moon dust. It was actually quite hot that day. And in my fully lined 68 pattern uh, combat clothing, it was hot. And now I'm tangled up in my sling. I really should have shortened it or even taken it off the rifle for this. Yeah, I've got to shake myself out of it. Oh, this is glacial and so painful to watch. And yes, they put the rocks there deliberately. I hate crawling! So I'm now aware of the sling being a pain, so I'm sort of actively managing it. Got a bit more speed on here, but once Polonaz video's out, you'll see uh, quite how fast Giga just blitzes through this. And we're done. And that is, in fact, all of the rifle shooting for the match. I hate crawling. I hate crawling so much. You hate sound? Long sling gets in the way as well. Hadn't expected that. Oh my God. Smashing work, Colonel Sergeant Mike. Oh, thank you, sir. The Falcons are ours now, oh boy. Uh, you do your duty to the king and the, oh, sorry, the queen, the queen's majesty. Thank you. That was a lot shittier than it looked, huh? <laughs> That's an awful lot shittier than it looked. That was really shitty. Yes, it was. Tell me, do your knee, you, you have knee pads on your shins? No, I've got knee pads. Yeah, I have knee pads on my knees, but not on my shins. And it turns out all the rocks were under my shins. Ah, shit. <laughs> so I think now we've got to the end of the rifle, we can sort of make a few comments on it. Um, the moon dust gets everywhere, like Desert Brutality 2021. Um, the rifle ran flawlessly. The only one minor hiccup with it was the load and make ready on, uh, on stage eight there. Um, where it did hang up a little bit and I just had to pull it, pull it back and let it go. But in terms of cycling, I never had an issue. I didn't have a feed jam, didn't have anything. It's literally just when it was full of cack by the end there and I didn't clean it overnight. Naughty, naughty me. Um, it just hung up there. I mean, I think the myths surrounding use of these magazines is either that they were trash ones, that people could get their hands on trash ones or, um, uh, the, the, the British Army FUD law is they're meant to be gravity assisted so there's not enough spring tension that way up. But I've actually measured it and there's more spring tension on a full one of these. But more tension means more friction. And when there's dirt in there, more friction, particularly if you're using blanks, um, I suspect they'll use more, more often with blanks than, uh, than live when people got hold of them. Um, certainly on the first round, I could, see, I could see that being an issue, but it's the opposite of the myth. It's not that there's not enough spring tension, it's that there's so much spring tension that there's too much friction. Uh, and I suspect with with blanks, um, with the crimp, there's loads more friction going on there. The rifles are probably not correctly gassed for blank. Um, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's lots of the old and bold say they won't work, they will always jam. Well, I just ran a whole match in the dust with them, with two of them, they ran flawlessly. Uh, I previously owned another, back when I lived in the Netherlands, it ran flawlessly. Um, friend in Denmark has one or two run flawlessly. Um, I think probably that's going to deserve a little myth busting video on its own at some point. So what fun and frolics awaited us on the uh, field of glory there. Uh, this time it was the tire hammer where we had to try and move 
a tire, and some of the tires moved more easily than others, with a sledgehammer. And uh, again, I put in a really unimpressive performance, but uh, that was fun. <laughs> So on to stage nine, Starting position. we had to take a shot of hot sauce, thank you Jenny, and then we run with these, and this is a, this is a nice uh, screw with your mind stage, pistol only, so we run around the corner, and then we have to turn over one of these three things, and there's a code, and mine is M7N, oh, but I had to turn it back. And then it's the spinner. And you weren't allowed to look at it again. So then we go and draw the pistol, and then we spin the spinner, or expend 34 rounds failing. And I'm shooting without gloves now, because I thought, I need all the help I can get with my pistol shooting right now. Not quite over, so close, so close. So close again, and then 15 rounds are out. And then I get it over. That's the first pistol spinner I ever got over. So then we want to run round, we've got to remember what we were trying to remember. We've got some real fire there. So my, the way my brain works is that it has to see everything before it sees the two things. So on, on, for each of the codes, there's, there's one of the three and there's these long codes over each of it. But um, once you've seen them, it's relatively easy. But it just takes your, your brain a little while to process it. And again, there's Pepper poppers in front for penalties. And then I hold the pistol in my off hand so that I can uh, face up range and not worry about where the muzzle's pointing. I decide to go for a preemptive reload because I don't know how many rounds are in it, not that many. And we do the same exercise here where I have to look at the whole thing, I have to walk across and see everything before I see oh, any of them, it's weird. And it's one, two, one, two again. We missed. So that was that. The task now was a mechanical breach. Uh, so hitting a bit of a two by four. Uh, you got three minutes, I think, two minutes, three minutes to break it. And I didn't, Giga broke his in three, but then he's an absolute beast. Uh, Ian broke his. Um, I came close, but a couple more swings, that would have, uh, that would have got it. Six, five, four, three, two, one, time. Nice work. Oh. Well, that was fun. <laughs> we did some serious damage to it. <sighs> now on to the final stage. And holster. Pistol only. And, I can leave, leave and this is a bit of a classic old school brutality pistol stage here. Tuck, tuck, throw, tuck, tuck, throw, tuck, tuck. So there's a bit of remembering what to do. I will be counting loudly. Okay, two ready. Stand by. So you've got a small plate on the outside. One. You got a big plate here Two. with a penalty popper in front of it. Heft that over, go under, run to the end, small plate, this. Big plate, and then rinse and repeat. And be very aware of where your muzzle is and where your your other arm is. Five. Six. Ooh. 
Yeah, sometimes brownies will uh, lock open randomly. At least that one will. Did it again. Probably because it's full of dust at this point. Nine. Ten. She's flat. Proves that my grip's all right. <laughs> Now I know I fired 14 rounds and I'm making a decision in my head here. It's do I reload as I go across for the last shot or do I try and suck less? And I try, I decide I'm going to take the risk and risk it and I got it. Unload, show me clear. Thank you, hammer down and holster. Aika, 1-0-8-6-0. Time, 1-0-8-6-0. Thank you. It's nice when you take the risk and it pays off. 1-0-8-6-0. Happy with that. Let's do it, please. Nice job. Thank you. Get a beer. Relax. Good job, Mike. That was good shit. Thank you. We've got uh, Breacher. So I'm fairly happy with that. A couple of misses, but uh, pff, not the end of the world. So. We go on for the last bit of fun and frolics, which is the log sweats, which is a participation event. Um, I was with Les of uh, Polaris Worldwide Logistics and um, Ivan of Kit Badger. We happen to have a nice easy log, unlike the other guys. Um, and this was a nice little bit of team building and embracing the suck together. Six. Got it. Moving. Moving. Got it. Moving. 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 Keep right yeah. there. That was the least awful one so far. All right. Here's to a successful finish brutality. Cheers. Get this. I just kept thinking it's gonna suck for Mike when that thing goes off. This was an outstanding year. This yeah. year was amazing. Breacher was hard, but also fun. Yes. Bad the stages room. were good. We're so excited about Breacher, we're not yeah. even thinking about the stages that were the main attraction, and they were outstanding. The props were good. We had a casualty. A yep. live casualty. A burning vehicle. Only one live casualty who was intended <laughs> to be a casualty, fortunately. Very good acting. We had fire. Uh, we had electronic targets. Sisu. We had an armored APC. Yeah, that, we like, had an armored truck. Shooting from an armored vehicle is always fun. That, that's... Like, where, where else can you do that? We had shooting from the move on the back of the Sisu. Ah, this ah, yeah. is a great end to a great match. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Fantastic. So, we will see you all here next year. So, that was an absolutely fantastic match, as I'm sure you'll agree. Um, happy with how the L1A1 and Browning performed. So, so my performance um, could have been better, can always be better. So overall, there were 149 that finished, plus one, two, three, four, five DQs. Uh, overall, I was 41st, quite happy with that. Um, it's quite a heavily uh, armored slash TST based match in Finland. So I was 36th in armored and of the 35 odd in breacher, I came 14th, middle of the pack. I have no idea how the scoring worked uh, for Breacher simply because my um, my physical performance was <laughs> but uh, still came above middle which was pretty cool so thank you again to everyone who made this possible uh, thank you very much to um, administrative results for the awesome thumbnail that makes me look like not like me makes me look awesome somehow not just a like desk jockey nerd like I am um, Thanks again to Varus Deleka for putting on a, an absolutely fantastic match and for their awesome hos hospitality. Thanks for the other guys on the media score for being an awesome team. Uh, thank you so much to the sponsors who made it all possible. And again, thanks to you, 
the viewers and the patrons and the player supporters who make it all financially possible. So if you like this kind of thing, please consider supporting us if you don't already do so. And uh, hopefully we will be carrying on going onwards and upwards in the bloke on the Wearing world. So see you again sometime. Bye.